How's it going, you guys? Damocles here, and today I am finally bringing you my Garchomp build. You guys have been asking for this for a while, and I am going to bring it to you today. I think that the last round of Garchomp buffs kind of pushed me over the edge, and now I just got to do it. So if you like this content and you want to see more guides, hop in the channel and uh, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment down below what you think of this build, because Garchomp is pretty fun to play right now after the latest round of buffs. Uh, but without further ado... Oh, also, hop in my Discord. Discord link in the description. If you want to chat about any of these builds or you want to find people to play with, we got a pretty active community growing there. Um, but anyway, Garchomp itself. So the last uh, patch, the mobile patch, uh, just buffed Garchomp pretty significantly in my opinion. Um, the main problems that Garchomp had were uh, its staying power and the fact that it could be really kited quite easily and it wasn't super tanky, like it wasn't tanky enough to make up for that glaring weakness, but they just buffed its defense and special defense, uh, which really, in my opinion, helps it out quite a bit. It gives it a lot more staying power. Also, we've got some new items like uh, like Razor Claw and Weakness, weakness Policy, excuse me, uh, that can also be really useful on Garchomp. Uh, in this game in particular, though, I'm not running Razor Claw. Uh, I wanted to, but I ran out of time in the matchmaking process. Uh, so this time I'm running Scope Lens, Muscle Band, and Buddy Barrier. Um, I think that you could go and swap out Scope Lens for Razor Claw, and it'd be quite good just because Razor Claw goes and gives you that extra uh that extra like slow with the basic attack which would be really nice to keep targets in range of garchomp but it's totally up to you i would highly recommend running buddy barrier though just because it's really nice on top of garchomp's unite ult to just get in the middle of those team fights and mess people up um, as far as actually jungling as garchomp is concerned um you want to be on top of your farm at all times like you need to be on top of your farm straight up uh, because early on in the game you are not that strong uh, if you're facing, like, a lot of melee characters, you can get away with doing some cheeky stuff by, like, getting close range, getting your passive stacked up, and then once your passive stacked up, just stay there and make sure you keep hitting people uh, because you have a large amount of damage output and healing from that. Um, so don't be afraid to go and really stay in the middle of a fight if you think, uh, you know, your passive is enough to go and win it for you because in a lot of cases it is. Um, also, I run Dragon Rush and Dragon Claw. I just think it's the best moveset possible for Garchomp, in my opinion. Um, I think it shores up all of his weaknesses, and you can do a lot of, uh, like, real cheeky stuff with it. Uh, specifically, um, Dragon Rushing, like, entire teams off of goalposts or, like, just one defender off a of goalpost can literally change the outcome of an entire game. Like, it's really... The displacement is really mean. You can see that I do a ton this game. I don't do it, you know... Uh, so, like, I don't do it as much as I would like in any game, but that's because the amount of times I think you should be displacing people with Garchomp is way too high. He is really, really, really good at displacing people off of objectives and off of goalposts, so you need to abuse that when you can. Knock people off, pull them into your team, because remember that the, the hitbox for Dragon Rush is actually, like, it starts a little bit behind where Garchomp is standing because it does, like, a little backpedal before it goes. So, like... You don't necessarily have to be behind the person in order to land that pull. You can be a little bit in front of them, and it will still pull them. Uh, another thing that makes Garchomp really nice right now is the removal of that Dreadnought debuff. I talked about it in my Talon Flame video as well, um, and I talked about the removal of the Dreadnought debuff in another video if you want to go check that out. But basically, now all Dreadnoughts are up for grabs, which, in my opinion, puts a lot more emphasis on characters that can take objectives real easily. Um, and you know, that's not to say every single time you will be getting a be able to go and solo an objective. And in no circumstances should you really be trying to solo something like Zapdos as Garchomp uh, because it's just too easy to to get a steal uh, but it just puts a big emphasis on being able to go and take as many objectives as humanly possible before the end of a game uh, specifically dreadnought and uh, you know you can see that using that i get some major experience leads i mean right now that blissey is is three levels below me as garchomp uh, which is not a good sign for them look at this i thought they were supposed to fix norlax yawn why did he punch me and i still didn't wake up Answer me that. Answer me that, guys. Um, but, again, big tenants that I want you to follow when you're playing Garchomp. Keep up your farm. Like, when you see the buffs coming up, 
unless you are doing your objective or you're farming like a bunch of other camps, like go and get your buffs. Get to level 15 before the game ends um, because a level 15 is a huge chunk of damage. It's a huge chunk of stats uh, in those end game team fights and Garchomp is very easily able to get there. Look at this fight. See, I, like I'm ahead of these people and I've got my passive stacked up. If you're on the enemy team and you see a Garchomp full passive or Gibble or whatever, do not fight them. I mean, this Lucario, I don't know what he was doing. It's probably a new mobile player or something like that. But uh, you cannot fight a Garchomp that's fully stacked up. Like, always wait for the... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Always wait for the passive to drop before you actually go and commit to a fight. If you're going against a Garchomp. If you are playing as a Garchomp and your, <laughs> your uh, stuff is stacked up, go all in, son. All in. And look at this. This poor Blissey. Just can't catch a break. Can't catch a break. Lucario still tries to go in on me. Come on. Come on, you silly goose. Uh, we're going to go and pull that Cramorant back because that's just, you know, that's going to be their their clear, right? That's going to be how they try and push, up, push us off of objectives. But this game doesn't really end up being close because, I mean, look at this. Like, if you have a level lead as Garchomp, it's pretty scary. And now that, the, now that it's got more special defense and more defense... Um, you have so much more staying power in team fights. Like you can take so much more punishment and that just means that Garchomp is able to get that passive fully stacked and really output insane amounts of damage. Um, and if you're running Razor Claw, you can keep people in close too. So that's something to keep in mind. You can see as soon as that's done, I'm not going to dilly dally up there. There's nothing to be gained. I'm going to go back and I'm going to farm my buffs, make sure I can hit that 15 power spike. I don't know if I call it a power spy, I would just say level 15. Um, and then make sure, as far as I'm as I'm speaking about these, uh, you know, about farming, if your team loses a turret early on, those big camps of Aud Audinos at the top of the map, go and farm those. People, like, I, for some reason, people so rarely touch them. Uh, I try and leave them to my laners most of the time, but, like, if you don't see someone touching them for a significant amount of time, Go and take those Audinos because that is like really good, solid, safe XP. And that's going to help you get back into the game. So like 100% go and, go and take those uh, those Audinos. You can see them in the top left corner of my map and the bottom right hand corner of of, uh, of their map. Um, and what else What else do I got to say? Oh, uh, Dragon Claw and Dragon Rush. You can actually activate these at the same exact time. Uh, so if you tr pop Dragon Rush and then you Dragon Claw at the same time, it's it kind of like combines the animation um, so that you, uh, you're you not spending two different... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not two different animations, but like multiple different frames, I guess, on using those. You can just combine them into one. So I would highly suggest doing that if you're trying to go for like burst damage and stuff like that. And... Um, there is like a little tech, uh, I don't do it in this clip because it's, it's kind of hard to pull off where you can actually go and basically like slingshot people backwards as Garchomp. Um, and I, I wish I could have done it for this clip, but I just couldn't, but I'm just letting you guys know that it's out there. I'm sure somebody else has got video of it. Um, but, uh, it's something that you can do kind of similar to the Zera Aura tech that I showed in my other video. Um, as far as, uh, Unite moves are concerned, I try to save my Garchomp Unite move for like if I'm getting really low in team fights or if I'm coming from far away and I'm trying to close the gap uh, because you know you might be thinking that it's wasting damage or something like that but the fact of the matter is that Garchomp's Unite move is kind of hard to aim like you don't really have too much control over the over the aiming um, because it happens so quickly so like if someone just moves out of the way slightly you can miss them. Uh, so sometimes it's really nice it, just from a timing perspective, like if, even if you just land, uh, you know, two of those, look at this displacement. I prevent the Snorlax from even trying to attempt this steal and then, and then slow bro stacks on top. Um, but sometimes it's really nice to be able to go and pop that unite move, um, and, and really like make that specific, uh, point where you want to hit. Does that make sense? Like it's easier to aim those large circular ones than it is to try and aim all four of them in like a really tiny area, in my opinion. So like, especially if you're going for a steal, like I don't really want to pop the Unite move when I'm right on Zapdos because you kind of got to aim back and forth and like sometimes your aim can go all haywire. I'm sure Garchomp people know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but if I go and I'm trying to go for a Zapdos steal, maybe I pop my ult like 20 yards away and that way, like, the final two hits will land right on top of Zapdos, right exactly where I want them to land. So that's just a little uh, little, uh, little tip for you there. 
this <laughs> this cram is so annoying here because uh cram's dive has been uh the cooldown's been massively reduced and i try to go after it but like obviously if it has a spammable uh you know escape option garchomp's gonna have a little bit of a hard time so you just need to know when to back off from those two right like if someone is trying to kite you out don't keep chasing after them don't be a silly goose like go and just walk away have your have your fight um you know somewhere else see look at him he dodges and i miss it is just oh that that hurts at the end of the game i mean we still won but it still hurts but that's my garchomp build i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you learned something a little bit maybe um if you like this content please consider liking commenting and subscribing it would mean the world to me i've got a bunch of other videos i've got tier lists I've got everything so uh go and Subscribe down below, like, hit the notification bell, comment if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that. And uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. Damocles out.